And welcome back to Jeff Kunage live here at Citizen Television. What an interesting conversation we're having with these brand new CSs. They've only been at work, what, two, three, four days? Imagine that, settling in. May not look as easy as it is, and none of them are saying it's going to be easy, but at least they're all admitting they're up to the challenge. Moses Kuria, trade, investment, industry, Nahumisha Wafula, health docket, and Kipchumba Murkom and roads and transport. Nahumisha, let me ask you this. Health is a devolved function, right? Uh, how does the Ministry of Health work with counties to ensure services delivery for all Kenyans? Uh, Jeff, uh, health is devolved to the extent of the fourth schedule of the Constitution. So there are those uh, uh, things that are supposed to be done by at the national level, that is by the Ministry of Health, and there are those that are supposed to be done at the county level. So if you look at uh, matters of uh, policy, matters of um, capacity building, those are at the national level. Then the implementation bit is what is at the county level. Therefore, there are going to be collaborations, and already they are there. The, 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 the instruments of collaborating have already been put in place. So now it's just a matter of activating these instruments so that people are able to work together to achieve what it is that we want to do for the people of this country. Look at, for example, our focus of the Kenya Kwanzaa plan is on primary health care. Who are going to achieve uh, to implement this primary health care? Is the people at the county level, the doctors at the county level. Therefore, what will I do as the person in charge of healthcare at the national level, then is to ensure that we are collaborating, we are talking, to ensure that our language is the same and that we are all focusing on the patient or on Mwanaiji in matters of uh, service uh, delivery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you avoid the strikes? Because there were many strikes uh, by healthcare workers in the counties. How do you avoid that going forward? Uh, one is that uh, from the executive order, we now have a state department under the Ministry of Health that is uh, for the health professionals and standards. So now they have a state department which uh, all health professionals can move into and be taken care of by that uh, state department. But again, as uh, I have said, we are trying to work together, talking more through, you know, the, the county governments, they have their CECs in charge of health. At the national level, then I am in charge of health. So we have forums where together we sit together uh, quarterly just to review what are the issues that then we need to achieve uh, together. Yeah. Uh, Kenya Kwanzaa was very critical of everything from the SGR to the Nairobi Expressway. Mm -hmm. How are you going to make them profitable? Are you still critical of them? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, to the extent that. Uh, um, you know, we were, we, were not, we were not critical of everything. We did not criticize the all, the, you know, the whole lot of things. Remember, we were part of the Jubilee administration from the beginning. We are the ones who laid the foundation for this massive infrastructure development. So we weren't critical of everything. We were critical of the things that went wrong. Uh, as I said earlier, let me I'll give you an example. Because the port SGR up to uh, the roads, at the port, and I gave that example earlier, and I think uh, I saw some people in the, in, in, uh, misunderstood it online. The port of Mombasa uh, contained a terminal two. The Kenya Ports Authority was forced to sign an agreement with a private company, okay, combined together with the parastatal there, to transfer an investment of 70 billion shillings to a private company without any consideration being given by that private company. Of course, I can't just sit here and say, oh, hallelujah, things are okay. We must do something about it. We have certain concessions uh, related to, uh, again, inland container uh, depots and uh, public land that was given concessions at uh, prices that are uh, ridiculous when you think about the investments that are put in those concessions. Of course, we must do something to make sure that there is value for money. Uh, Expressway, our only criticism about Expressway was basically that uh, the resources that were put by public, by the government, did not make the, the path for those who are unable to pay uh, to become uh, what it should be. If it rains today, you know we have a drainage problem in Mombasa Road, among other things. But the concept itself of privatizing road, uh, inviting, inviting 
private investors uh, to come and invest in our roads and giving them the space and the land to be able to construct is a good uh, uh, program if well thought out. So the question you ask yourself, the concession given to the expressway for over 30 years, was it the right thing to do or maybe 15 or 20 years would, would suffice? Um, if you think about uh, the, the roads that we are going to construct uh, in this Nairobi, of course we still want more investors who will come in the same manner that the expressway has been done but will better negotiations to come and invest in these roads and then we told them, uh, I have seen some questions about tolling of roads, it is important that we know that tolling is not always expensive, it, it can be cheaper. If you calculate the rates that are being paid and subtract it from the time you are going to save uh, in the process and the amount of money you are going to save, the fuel you are going to save, if you s s subtract it, there will be a surplus. If properly designed and in the roads that we know there are congestion that can attract more people to, to pass that road, then the fuel you save by, st if you say in a traffic, let me give this example, which I gave during my uh, vetting uh, or uh, con confirmation hearing. If you know the time that it takes from 3 to 4 p.m. from Bomas to go to Rongai alone, Rongai's t town there, it takes about two, three hours in a place that when there's no traffic, it takes you like 10 minutes. Uh, now, by the time you're going to Kiserian, and then you turn to come to Ngong, then all the way to uh, Karen uh, shopping center here. You take a longer time. If we have a good investor to invest in that road, yeah, and guarantee people that they are going, you will live here and be at Kiserian in 20 minutes. And therefore you can live in Konabaridi, you know? That means I can walk up to five o'clock knowing that the road is okay. I don't have to go and stay in the traffic. I can rush home, be home in 20 minutes and take care of the homework of your children and, and be on time to be, you know, you don't have to, you do your CBC, you know? <laughs> you don't have to go home and you are, you are a, a very uh, angry man or a woman fighting your, everybody because of road rage and, you know, all those sort of kind of problems. So tolling, depending on how it's implemented and particularly in the most congested areas, can become a, 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 a beneficial. That is why there are investors that have ex expressed uh, their desire to invest in the, our road from Mombasa up to Malaba. Uh, but those discussions must be discussions that uh, will end up being value for money and make sure that the people of Kenya can have the right, uh, um, what we call facilitation for business. If a lorry is taking today 12 hours to come to Nairobi and you toll the road and dual it, and make sure that they take six hours. It means they can go back and do two uh, trips from Mombasa to Nairobi. It can be beautiful to drive from Mombasa to Malaba because it can attract more tourists and more people can travel around the country. So it depends on how you structure it. If you go to China, for example, uh, I was being told over 15,000 kilometers of roads in China are are, are, uh, are, 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 are told. Uh, if you go to um, other countries in Europe, US and so forth, tolling has facilitated people to move faster and become cheaper. So you make sure, and then the money that you get from the tolling can be able then to be returned back to construct better roads and, and attract more people to invest. We must become innovative. I know that we must change the mindset. We must also give Kenyans really proper calculation of the benefit they're going to get. And it must be the road that we think that at the moment it's impossible. Uh, you know, Thika Road was intended to be told, uh, but because of fear, you know, people put, if we are been tolling uh, Thika Road and people are paying 50 shillings or even 20 shillings, by now we'd have saved enough money to borrow against it to construct equivalent of Thika Road up to perhaps Meru. So if you tra travel in similar road from Thika Road to Meru, you will not have the traffic that you have currently in Thika Road, so, what, some of which is contributed by the exits, but also by the end of the road at uh, Thika. So after that, the traffic now begins to build as you exit from Thika. You know the road is now being extended to Nanyuki and, and so forth. If we want to have similar roads of Thika Road across the country and have equity, people get to travel from here to Nakuru using two and a half hours, not using seven hours then the benefit transferred back to the people.
And uh, that investment, actually, I need <laughs> Moses pointing out, uh, this investment uh, that we are going to work on our roads through uh, public-private partnerships, um, among others, is a collaborative effort of the uh, implementing agency like ours, but also the role that is being played by the investment mm -hmm. uh, arm of government at the at the ministry that uh, my my colleague is running here. Yes, and that's why you had the president saying that uh, government is not as a place with silos. We will be working in collaborative efforts. Yeah. By the way, another thing the president said uh, to all of you yeah. is that there's failure is not an option. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. Uh, in his ministry or in his, yeah. I'm responsible as well. Yeah, as well so yeah. that brings in the aspect of all government approach. Yeah. Because as he talks about roads, yeah. then I'm thinking of the referral system. Correct. The ambulances, yeah. how they are going to move. Correct. You know? Yeah. You think about safety. Safety. And, and making sure that people are not being hit yeah. because we must have non motorized transport. You know, all that. And yeah. it's all round. Mm. Je yeah. Jeff, Jeff, one thing that uh, I think Paul Coleman and Susan have pointed out is the level of collaboration we have in this government. Mm -hmm. Correct. Some of the things we do, I, I am finding some of colleagues have already gone and consulted my departments, and I am very much okay with that. Mm. Uh, I'll just give you an example. Uh, I'm in charge of investment, and for the first time, and I want to thank the president for this, that we have a, a state department for investments, because it has not been done properly. Uh, the, the money that Mulcomen is talking about is going to come from my investors. Yeah. So I am busy out there mm. looking for investors. We are going to take off our roads project. Going forward, you can see the level of indebtedness that we have in the road sector. Mm. What are going for, uh, forward? Right. You can expect that I'm going to bring in to invest in our water project, to invest in our energy project. And his to water in our, in our, in our will hospital. contribute to buy primary health care. Okay. Mm. Not yes, even that. There's going to be a point where we can't build public hospitals anymore. Yes. So it's up to me to go out there to the world and bring in investors. And going forward, you'll find that government does only up to some point and then takes it forward. Yeah. But the amazing thing is, one, the level of collaboration that we have in this government, the interdependability that we have. Mm. But most important, and we've seen other governments before, the level of autonomy yeah. and freedom to operate that yeah. President William Ruto has given us as a minister. It just reminds me of President Kibaki and the hands free. You know, there's no pettiness and territorial wars and <laughs> tabs that this is not mine, it's yeah. do this. We're out there. Mm. You know, yesterday I was having a conversation with the president and we're asking, how to, how, uh, which highway do we want to, uh, to go through? It is only in Kenya where we, be, we are building highways. Mm. And I hope my brother will come and look at this issue. Mm. Where we put bombs on the highways. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Well, then how is it a super highway? Problem. Mm. It has problem. bombs. Yeah. Uh, what you want is like what you call the German autobahns. Correct. And in this government, the president asked him, let's make a choice. Do we stop somewhere to come and always ask whether I should j jump this bump mm. or should I just drive? Yeah. And he told me, you guys drive until yeah. I tell you stop. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we're going to work. <laughs> That's how we are working. <laughs> we are driving until yeah. we see a sign say, yeah. stop. stop. And yeah. you're not putting bumps yeah. on, on, a, on, a, on the superhighway. Yeah. We are driving on the German automat. We are going all the way because we are empowered and we work for a guy who is not petty. Mm. By the way, one thing a lot of people don't know about you is you lived in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia for many years. Absolutely. And you speak fluent Arabic. Correct. And I'm talking to my Saudi friends and my Qatari friends and UAE friends to bring in the money that he needs to take off his, his projects out there. Mm. But, you know, I'm also proud that right now the president gave me strict instructions, but by Christmas we must have passed our privatization amendments. Mm. which has stalled the privatization process. Because mm. again, not only do we need to bring in new investors, which I am talking to, but also we need to free up our, 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 our state-owned enterprises where it makes sense to have private investors. Mm. Let's do that. I'll give you a very sad example. Mm. We had one of the privatization that was working fairly well, Telecom Kenya, 60% owned by an investor, Helios, out there. Then they were frustrated by the hardship government and they, they actually gave up their shares. And Telco, when I'm talking about privatization, we, are, we actually went back, rolled back on privatization of Telco Kenya. And now Telco Kenya is a palastato. Tell me, how does, to buy a pen in a palastato, you need to go through public procurement. Right. Yeah? Yes. How do you expect Telco Kenya to compete with Safaricom? Mm. Yeah? Mm. What is a public body? And I'm going to roll back that back. 
I am going to, I am working on rolling back that very sad thing of frustrating an investor. Until now, we roll back on, 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 a, on, a, on, a, on a private body to become, we have nationalized Telecom Kenya mm -hmm. when we are talking about privatization. So, simple the answer is we are working together, we are interdependable. My input is his output, his output is, is her input. And also, we are working with a guy who is confident enough to allow us to do what we need to do to fix this country. Mm -hmm. the, the story of Helios is a very sad one. Yeah. Uh, because part of the state capture. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the manner in which they were exited and how the properties of Telcom were interfered with. Um, I hope Moses, will, you will also scratch <laughs> to, uh, we are because too of course, with our colleague in the in the relevant ministry uh, of uh, ICT and, uh, and and so there is, as I said, there is, uh, and that's why the principle of collective responsibility is a constitutional principle that is as old as governments, mm -hmm. because then it is it is uh, you look after each other you discuss these things together there's a lot of things that uh, jeff unfortunately happened uh, in the last three years or so uh, from 2018 actually because some of the documentation i see from 2018 that would require outright reversal uh, some of which roadblocks have been put uh, uh, what i can call legal uh, minefields that uh, that are dangerous. They are expected to explode at the, at the expense of our country. So we are using our experiences. Uh, we're using also the resources that we have in our ministries to make sure that we navigate through these issues without uh, being crybabies like uh, Moses said. Mm -hmm. uh, we must provide solution. We must provide solution to these things. And uh, unfortunately, um, some people will have to suffer the consequences of their actions, but I am not going to be one of those cabinet secretaries whose responsibility is uh, who goes to office looking for whom can I punish and whom can I fire, whom who should be arrested. Mm -hmm. We'll just do our work. If, if in, the, in the process of doing this work, it falls on you that uh, you committed something. You just give way as we proceed, okay, without being local. without being malicious and vindictive, uh, because we know where malice and vindictiveness. I see sometimes when I meet uh, public officers, particularly in my ministry, that somebody is talking with you with some certain kind mm -hmm. of fear, because in the past, in the last few years, every time they are <laughs> they approach a public officer, they were wondering. What, which story do you want to hear? Mm -hmm. And I keep telling them, I want to hear the truth. I want to hear the one that is going to help the country. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not uh, interested in victimization of anybody. It should be about work. And if the process leads to uh, a problem that must be solved, we solve the problem as we do the work. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go to the magic wall. There's lots and lots of reactions. Let's see what Kenyans think of what our Waziris have been saying the last hour or so. Edwin Kipleting says, kindly ask uh, Nakumicha if she knows about the 1,000 UHC employed work, 10,000, sorry, UHC employed workers on contract during COVID-19. Can they employ them on permanent and pensionable terms? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm aware of uh, those healthcare workers. And uh, they were employed during COVID. Eh? Mm -hmm, correct. COVID was uh, an emergency. And as it is, uh, the numbers that we were experiencing then, we are not experiencing them right now. So therefore, it is uh, an issue that has to be reviewed and uh, just making good use of resources that are available. And uh, the health workforce, of course, then we need to review and see, do we need the same or not? And if we don't need them for COVID, then can we absorb them for other mm -hmm. functions within the health setup? Okay. Yeah. Very good. Russell Ouko says, uh, Honorable Murkumen, will you embrace ideas of digital solutions that can address some long-standing challenges in the transport sector, like road fatalities from Kenya's innovators? Uh, yes, definitely. You, we are almost piloting a, a project that deals with traffic management and uh, that can also manage, uh, collect information related to traffic offenses. Uh, in the next uh, two, three weeks, uh, we will make a statement as to what extent we, ha we are. We are also working on digitizing uh, all the information related to uh, inspection of our vehicles. Uh, we are including 
being able to know which vehicle has which speed governor, which was installed at which, what time. We want all that information be digitized so that we can be able to manage. In the long run, and I hope we do the, it within the next five years, we hope that our highways will have speed ca cameras and uh, cameras that can collect other uh, information related to uh, traffic offenses and that we will move to instant fines uh, immediately uh, to ensure that if you are found committing a traffic offense, uh, overlapping, you are uh, 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 driving uh, at high speed and so forth, uh, we will be able to identify you uh, using the current smart number plates and make sure that you receive, in fact, the testing of the SMS system. Uh, the team which was working on it was working on it today so that immediately you are found with the traffic offenses, you get an SMS directly mm. to your phone telling you at Fine. Bunyala Road, you are found overlapping mm. and this is the fine and the cameras will have recorded because we'll have e-police uh, that will be at the command center right. uh, monitoring what's happening and making sure that they, that information is recorded for evidence if need be. And that's an instant fine or what Instant fine. Mm. You will be given an instant fine. The message, you'll just get a message that <laughs> you will pay th uh, 300 shillings or 3,000 shillings overlapping. for overlapping or over speeding or uh, uh, any other of the traffic offenses. Yeah. And then you will be told that you must pay because we will take the law to parliament to make sure that uh, it also, if you don't pay within a certain period of time, it attracts interest. Mm -hmm. And then when you go, if you are a serial offender, when you go to renew your insurance, we, this information will be shared with the insurance companies. When you go and renew your insurance, the premium goes up. Every time it goes up, it will reach also a stage where if you become a very notorious offender, we, you, we cancel your tri driving license, we take you back to training. Uh, we are going to oversight the, again using digital platform to make sure that we, all the driving schools are identified. We are going to outsource the inspection of vehicles because we have only 30 inspection centers in the country. We plan to have a private uh, 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 companies that are going to be uh, given the license to inspect vehicles with strict uh, requirement that if you inspect a vehicle and let them free, that company will be punished and also will be deregistered and so forth and so forth. So technology is going to be the driving uh, force in the ministry. That's why, again, when we were being vetted uh, the other week, uh, one person asked me, we want to see you. You know, someone told me, we want to see you uh, going around the country and uh, catching uh, drivers and all that for over speeding and all this kind of thing, the way Michuki did it. But I think Michuki did it that way because it was that time. If we can employ technology now, we will be doing it differently because we have the benefit of technology that we didn't have then. And that is the area that I am, we are also partnering with development partners and investors. And I hope that we can get good investors that are going to invest in this system because uh, the objective is not to collect the fines. The objective is to eventually bring order. Mm. And if we can bring order in Nairobi to start with, and a few of the highways, we can do Nairobi Mombasa, and then we do the highways, uh, then we model that across the country. This nation will be uh, wonderful and will reduce the road carnage. Unfortunately, Jeff, eh, let me use this opportunity to say this. We lost 13 people last weekend because of road accidents. Yes. We lost uh, 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 six of them in the, uh, I think it was Eastern uh, Bypass, bypass yeah. because uh, uh, somebody uh, was uh, uh, um, a border border guy was driving in a highway. Uh, another one was because there was a tuk tuk in a highway. Now we need to bring, uh, and we uh, we've discussed with uh, my colleague in the in the in the interior. We must bring order. We must know that the motorbikes, the uh, border borders, and the tuk tuks are solutions of last mile. Mm. Uh, at the highway, you have certain vehicles that must go through the highway, yeah. the transport system. Then the border border guys wait at the last mile. If you see how dangerously uh, people are being carried on the, in town, because we drive uh, along these towns so every day and every, hour, every other time, you see that somebody's being carried by a motorbike at a high speed in a highway without a helmet, without anything. First of all, respect yourself. You know, as a, as, a, as, a, as a citizen, respect yourself. Before you border, 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 ask yourself, is it safe for me to do this? Do, does he have the helmet? Does he have... If we just leave enforcement to us, there must also be the user of that product that must be able to take that in uh, border, border. So we will respect our border borders because they are bottom up. But 
we must get all of us organized to know that this is where the area they operate. And we need national county governments to be able to help us in that regard to make sure that these are transport of last mile, the highways will do a particular responsibility. And you, you will be making more statements on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. too much road carnage. Yes. Too much. Asif Gulam is saying, will the government offer any incentives to lower cost of manufacturing? Kenyan manufactured clothes can end up being more expensive than the ones from Bangladesh that you were talking about, Moeshimu. The same applies to pharmaceuticals. Uh, yes, indeed, Jeff, we are going to offer incentives. I've talked about power. Uh, Naivasha, already we are, you know, the, the investors in Naivasha are going to be breaking ground next week so that we can start working there. We are working with other special economic zones uh, within just the areas under CS Murkomen, uh, Dongo Kundu in Kualer and Mombasa, within Lapset, within uh, uh, the other park that we have in Adi River. So once we do these six to eight special economic zones and we're able to control power from there, then we can be able to look at other particular areas. But then there are some other costs which we will not be do, able to do much about. For example, it is true that the cost of labor in Bangladesh is a third yeah. of, of, of what we are paying yeah. here. And we have to ask ourselves, ultimately, do we want more money for few people? Or maybe not slightly less money, but for millions of people. Mm. Today, we have millions, do you know, we have got 10 million people who work for no industry at all. They work for nowhere at all. Six million people we have who are working in kiosks, in jokalis, and all that kind of thing. But if you tell these people, these 10 million who have no jobs, that I'll give you a job that may be paying slightly a bit less than what we are paying today within our industry, they will go for it. And my target is really to train these 10 million people who don't have anywhere to go to every day. Because maybe those people, we can have a different conversation in terms of how much money they can be paid so that we can be as competitive as, as other countries. Yeah. Because once we do this, then we take advantage of the huge opportunity we have within Africa. Trade within Africa. Africa is trading with itself only 19%. European Union is tra trading 65% among them. So, so we have this huge opportunity. We work on our cost base, we work on our power, maybe Kidogo we work on our wages, then we take advantage of this huge African, uh, African market of 1.2 billion people, and we'll be up, we'll be up in the air, uh, almost rivaling uh, China and all those other countries. Absolutely. Just, next... just to add on that, yeah, uh, on that question, there was the aspect of pharmaceuticals. Maybe just to let uh, Kenyans know, in terms of cost of manufacturing, the cost of manufacturing that drug is not expensive. But what makes it uh, expensive is the packaging material, mm. the cost of the box and the bottle that we are bringing in. So supposing we are able to manufacture the box here and the bottle here, you see? So eventually it will be a lower price for the pharmaceuticals. Uh, good point. Um, Moses Kuria, this is for you. Coach says, will the government build industries across the counties depending on the raw materials available in the same county? Yes, we are going to do that, but we are not just building the industry. It is not the work of government to build industries. It's work of the private sector to build industry. Mm -hmm. What we are doing, as I've told you, for example, from the county of Elegio uh, Maracu, this is cotton, it goes to the Texas. We are going to do mapping. And we're in that discussion with the Council of Governors to have what is the core competencies of every county. What is the USP, the unique selling point of every county? But ultimately, Jeff and Kenyans, you can expect that within this term of this government, we are going to have an industrial park, a mega industrial park in each of our 47 counties. Look at a county like, I mean, the northern part of Kenya, and, and you talk about the Middle East, we are going to make the northern Kenya to be a kitchen for the Middle East by establishing meat-based. Kenya is the only country where meat is for poor people. So we are blessed with that. In other countries, meat is for rich people. Mm. So by opening up those areas and asking them, please come and establish your kitchen here. A flight to a place like Jeddah is three hours. To Dubai is four hours. So we can really take advantage of our uniqueness that exists within, within our counties. Mm, absolutely. Austin Wanjal is asking, I would like the CS for Health to elaborate more on a circulating memo that training for financial year 2022-23 remains frozen. Does that mean interns won't be paid their salaries for the remaining part? Wow, interesting. Uh, maybe before I answer the question in totality, is that um, 
in uh, one of my, just trying to look around inside the Ministry of Health, is that uh, Kenya is a country where interns earn more than the actual doctors when they are deployed. For example, a medical intern earns close to 200,000. While when a new doctor is reporting in public, they're earning 104,000. Wow. You see, those inconsistencies there are things that need to be looked into. So I am uh, about the memo is uh, something that is a work in progress. Something will be done about it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good. Darito Moredi is saying, ask Kip Murkomen if the SGR will go beyond Naivasha, Nakuru, Kisumu, Kakamega. Uh, will it not be more viable? Y yes, ultimately, SGR will be will make sense if it goes uh, past Naivasha. At the moment, mm -hmm. uh, it is because of the constraints of resources and perhaps how we deployed our resources that we were unable to take it to at least Kisumu. If it was Kisumu, so that then we take advantage of the Kisumu port to carry most of the other goods by, by, by the lake, uh, which, which we are currently doing. Uh, you must also remember that we refurbished the meter gauge railway. Now it goes past uh, uh, Naivasha. It's going all the way to uh, Busia. We must make sure that using the meter gauge railway, we can connect the SGR from Naivasha, uh, where the dry port is supposed to be put, uh, uh, or is actually, all the way to via Eldred through meter gauge railway uh, to uh, Busia and also via Kisumu. But eventually, in the long run, uh, we must think of better ways of uh, moving the SGR to the border because they, our friends in the Ugandan side are also working on their own uh, SGR. And if this one happens, then uh, it will be great to, to ensure that uh, the remaining connection is done, but not at the current situation not at the current situation, and not borrowing at current situation. You know, we, SGR is our biggest uh, 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 source of uh, uh, debt, and um, we pay, you know, a lot of money every month uh, to, the, to, the, to our friends in China because of this uh, debt. And as I promised, I'll, I'm going to make the agreement public anytime soon so that the people of Kenya can be able to read and understand uh, the contents of that agreement. You don't want to do it now? No, no not here. I will, I'll make it. Uh, I need to talk to Kimani Chuma. Uh, once I, I am almost locating where it is. <laughs> once I get it, I will talk to the majority leader so that they can provide a forum in parliament uh, where, uh, through the representative of the people to present it to the people. We can't wait. Okay, one last tweet here. Waziri uh, Moses Kuria, how do you help counties secure profitability in investment deals with investors to ensure that they don't lose value for money? The majority of counties give in too much in the name of bringing investors to counties. Uh, Jeff, Kenyans must know that investors have a choice. They don't come here because of lack of choice mm. or lack of somewhere else to go. We are in competition. We are competing with other countries. We are competing with Morocco. We are competing with India, with Sri Lanka, and all these countries. So there's nothing, there's no much you can say it is too much to give to investors. As long as they are bringing in foreign exchange and as long as they are creating jobs for the country, we need these investors. Having said that, we are working on a framework of collaborative framework with the counties. But let me tell you also something. I have found so many investors who are telling me, we were looking for some, somebody to send to us. We have our money, we have our billions of dollars. We, we were taken left and right. You wonder, why would someone frustrate someone with money? You know, it was just a wrong mindset. That's why we said, we agreed with the president that uh, under the Kenya Investment Act that established the Kenya Investment Authority, there's a provision to set up the Kenya Investment Council whereby uh, that council, the president is the chair of the council, I as a minister in charge of management, I'm the sec secretary of that council. All the in, uh, proposals and inquiries will come and we have a, a very streamlined process, a very predictable and reliable process of uh, considering investment proposals. The chair of county of Gov uh, council of governors is going to be a member of that council. So ultimately, it's not my decision alone. It's not for people to invest a truth for me in that street or that corner. I will receive the proposals through the Kenya Investment uh, Authority, our one-stop center for, for, for investors, I consider that a PPP unit, which is going to be reporting to me, we sit down together, we evaluate it. Once I'm convinced that this is an investment uh, that meets the criteria, I now 
and the Council of Governors chair, we take it to the Council, to the Kenyan Investment Council, which uh, is going to be chaired by the President. Next week, the President will gazette the Council. And so that now we can have a very predictable way of dealing with, with, with investment proposals. But as I wind up, it is us who need the investor. Mm. It's not the investor who needs us. And we should stop behaving as if the investor has nowhere else to take their money. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> very well put. Some closing thoughts, <laughs> starting with you, Nakumita. <laughs> closing thoughts going forward. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for this opportunity for sitting on this bench. I've been uh, watching it many years. <laughs> I never yeah. knew that uh, bottom up would work to this level. <laughs> it bring up Nakumita from uh, from the village to the bench. Yes. Eh? But uh, what I would like to say is that. Um, in the words of uh, Michelle Obama, he said for some things to be achieved, it means that uh, somebody has to give up a portion of their pie for somebody else to get. Mm. So I have been tasked with the responsibility of ensure that we achieve uh, universal health coverage. So I want to ask of Kenyans that there are some tough decisions that we will take at the moment or right now, but we'll only see results in five or 10 years to come. Mm. So as we journey together, I request for their indulgence and uh, sacrifices. And uh, we, are, we are not sacrificing for ourselves, we are sacrificing for our parents in the village, we are sacrificing for our sisters, for our siblings, and for the generations to come. So looking back five, 10 years down the line, we shall all be happy as Kenyans that now we have a robust, a resilient universal health coverage. Thank you. Oh, well said, well said. Moses Korea, closing thoughts. My closing thoughts are this one, uh, we manufacture or we perish. We export or we perish. We save to invest or we perish. That's why I'm very pleased with the president for taking that bold move of gazetting the new rates for NSSF contributions. And I want to thank everybody, including Atoli, for agreeing that, you know, the higher level of savings is going to drive investment that is going to liberate this country. So we really need to have our priorities right. And finally, to thank the president for, 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 for really... Uh, Implementing the bottom up. As soon as just getting them, 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 them from somewhere. Can you imagine somebody from a forest called Embobut? You know, he's a minister for roads. I am the first flag from Gatulu South without a big family to it. That's really bottom up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Chumba you get the last word. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, I look forward to uh, this period of time that we are serving, that our actions will speak louder than our words, mm. that we will be able to be uh, uh, that really true transformative leadership, that I shall be part of the people and all of us together who will build a team and harness on the potential uh, that is in well-educated and, and highly experienced public servants. Uh, because my job as a, as a leader is not that I know everything, is to take that which is uh, available as a resource in our country and channel it to, 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 to produce results. And if there is a mentor in that, uh, in that sector, it's the president himself, you should attend these meetings mm. uh, one of these <laughs> days, yeah? Uh, <laughs> with this economic team and the rest of us, and uh, you know, professors there telling him off and saying, no, 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 you are wrong, yeah. you know, and he's saying, no, okay, educate me, you know. Yeah. Uh, that kind of environment where it is, I, and I'm glad we have a leader of his type that allows all of us to, to listen to many, many ideas. And that's why uh, I don't feel sad that I, when I sit in my office and listen to as many different ideas as possible from different people on how we should do certain things that are, pertain to my ministry and also the country. And uh, through the principle of collective responsibility, we shall look after each other, sisters and brothers, who have been given the highest responsibility to sit in the highest executive organ. Uh, to make decisions on the people of Kenya. We must know that this opportunity is sacred and uh, we must know that it is, uh, it is not permanent it's for a very short time. We must leave a very good um, uh, legacy that other people will pick from where we will live 
to take our country forward and make it really, truly transformative. Absolutely. I, 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 I want to apologize because I forgot to tell you this, that uh, I came late. And he, he, you said you were he, working. Yes, I was working, but it, that, that's not an excuse enough. Once you <laughs> commit yourself to, to, <laughs> to, to a particular uh, program or a place, yes. you must find, uh, you must reorganize what you are doing to make sure that you attend, you attend to your to, to, to the schedule that you promised. Well, at least you showed up. You yeah, yeah. Very important. <laughs> Thank you. And I, and I Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you very much. Give Jim Mulcom and Nakuchima Nakumicha Wafula. Moses Kuria, thank you so much, folks. Thank you. Okay. And, you know, like, um, like you guys were saying, failure is not an option, huh? No. no. You know, it's all hands on deck. Correct. Yeah. And you guys have a huge responsibility. We do. And we'll be checking on you guys all the time. Thank you. Thank you. We'll make sure that, you know, what you say yeah. is followed through with action. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank and you. thank you for being a part of Jeff Can I Get Live. What an interesting conversation, folks. Country going forward. We'll see. It's up to you and I to make sure these folks get their jobs done right. Keep tweeting at Koinanga Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag JK Live. Thank you so much. Good night, good luck. Thank you. God bless this beautiful country of ours called Kenya. Well done, guys. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.